The people of Osland have more ties with the land of Kislev to the north than they do with their countrymen to the south. This is because of the Forest of Shadows and the Middle Mountains that form two natural barriers between Osland and the rest of the Empire. Within the Forest of Shadows are vast amounts of wild game but also darker creatures such as the Chaos Beastmen and the Forest Goblins. The Middle Mountains themselves are the highest point in the Empire and their peaks are inhabited by a large number of ogres. While not warlike by nature, Auslanders are never opposed to a good honest drunken brawl and with their love of dark ales these sort of scraps are not uncommon. During the great war against chaos, Auslanders rallied in great numbers to wield bow and spear in the defense of their Kislevite neighbors. More than any other part of the empire, Ostland has tasted the lash of chaos and their hatred of the evil ones knows no bounds. Alright everybody and welcome back to the channel. It's been a little bit of time. Life has been a little bit crazy. Work has been a little bit uh, too much but we're back. We're not giving up. We're doing it again. And now we have something fun for you. A new and different Mordheim Warband from some of the later released material. So this Ostland Warband is not included with the original uh, Morheim book. Uh, the human factions you can, I can, I believe you can be Reichland, you can be Marienburg, which all have these different sort of nuances to how they play in the game. But Ostland was released uh, later, and you can get the information for the Ostland Mordheim Warband on the Broheim. Net. That's where I got this uh, PDF here that I'm scrolling through. And I was reading a little blog on the internet which compared them to the Alabama of the Warhammer world. So a sort of backwater um, type of faction. And I'm back on my mini factory and I found... Once again, some great stuff from One Page Rules, a human faction. I think that's going to fit in uh, really well and has uh, some character uh, to the models. And I'm also going to find some bits here from my bits box. I have all sorts of stuff that I bought uh, secondhand, uh, toys from uh, my childhood. You can see here that I have some figurines from a Battle Masters game that I bought off of uh, eBay. And then, lucky me, I actually was digging through my parents' house and found my original buried under all sorts of stuff. And uh, yeah, some Mage Knight stuff in here. And there's this great ogre model. And that's kind of the cool, interesting thing about these Osland uh, warbands is you can have an ogre uh, with your human faction. And I'm taking this model and I'm going to put it on a little cobblestone base that I made out of a poker chip, which is uh, one of my favorite uh, hacks, DIY hacks to use for those larger uh, 72 to uh, like 120 somewhere around those parts uh, measurement models the larger models and I'm taking also some of these little uh, bowmen crossbow guys that are just uh, you know sitting in uh, the bin there and I'm gonna make them a part of the warband now everybody is getting 
the old uh, slap chop which if you've watched any videos on the YouTubes the tube views um, you've seen this before and it's just a black prime with a white and gray dry brush and we're gonna go for a more uh, simple uh, color scheme here just a simple white and black and we're going to use the white from the dry brush we're going to go really heavy on that you can kind of see that here that I've gone a little bit hard and we're going to use that to kind of like eliminate uh, the steps and I'm using some speed paint here um, for the the ogre's uh, flesh and we're also using that for the flesh of the warriors here, the, the infantrymen. And there's this little pig boy too that comes with the one page rules uh, 3D print STLs. And we made that as part of our leader. And I'm just kind of going in, batch painting these guys. Um, I've done some leather uh, speed paint and we're for the, for the boots sorry some some uh, that hardened uh, leather one of my favorite army painter speed paints and then we're going in now with the uh, metallics and uh, picking out the little some little gold spots some little uh, silver spots and I'm using uh, these Vallejo metallics which I think are some of the best and uh, I think a lot of times with like these empire type uh, or, or like you know if you're painting like the city guard for your Dungeons and Dragons uh, campaign um, a little bit of mixing the metallics on the same weapons on the same armor can make a lot of variety and now we're gonna cheat a little bit here and we're gonna hit all these guys with the some oil paint and we're gonna make a wash but we're gonna make the wash a little bit thicker than usual I'm using some odorless spirits here um, a little bit thicker than usual so we can kind of uh, muddy up and blend and make the metallics look a little bit more natural um, but also the cloth which is gonna be white and black anyways we can very carefully go over just the spots that we want to be darker and then totally ignore a few spots that have been already painted with the white to sort of skip a step so here you see I've just done like the armor I've chosen to leave some of the white on the shields the shoulders just a couple little details here and then put the wash everywhere else and it's basically like cut the time to get these guys tabletop ready in half i was able to paint these guys in a day basically um the only rough spot being that with these oil paints, you generally have to let them dry for uh, 24 hours. That was kind of the only thing, but it was a hot day. Um, it's about 100 degrees here in uh, Chicago, where I'm at. So now I'm painting a few details here on my little ginger boy, who looks just like Andrew Santino from the Bad Friends uh, podcast. So this is my little Andrew Santino boy over here, and yeah, check out Bad Friends uh, with Bobby Lee. <laughs> so funny. Comment below if you watch that too. Now in the lore, I believe that Ostlin has a white, black, and red color scheme, but I decided to lay off the reds because I have several Mordheim warbands already that are pretty heavy on the red. So we just wanted to kind of make... Uh, something different and separate them from the other Mordheim warbands and this kind of being sort of like a guest warband you know if I can 
finagle and convince and manipulate one of my friends to play a game with me, I can offer them this warband and make it easy uh, for them. And that's kind of the idea of why um, I'm doing a lot of these um, videos. I mean, it is fun to uh, own all this stuff and have it, but it's also fun to convince your friends to play. So I'm just finishing up the warband here with a quick white and gray dry brush and that's pretty much it and these guys are ready to hit the table and so thanks for uh, checking it out and we're gonna roll that beautiful bean footage.